What's going on everybody? This is Broken Games HDR. So I was given a code for Ghostwire Tokyo on PS5. So I'm going to give you my preview impressions. Keep in mind, this is not a full review yet. This is just a preview impressions. The full review will come later. So when Ghostwire Tokyo's gameplay was first revealed, I couldn't really tell what the hell it was exactly. So I was skeptical and pretty much indifferent about it. I didn't feel, you know, didn't feel one way or another about it. I was just like, eh. You know, it just looked like one of those unorthodox, bizarre games with a supernatural theme, so I couldn't really tell anything about it. Now, I believe the most accurate way to describe Ghostwire Tokyo to somebody who hasn't played it yet, which is all of you, is that it's a Japanese Bioshock. I'm not saying it's as good as Bioshock, not saying it's worse than Bioshock, but gameplay-wise, that's what it plays like. Or you could consider it a Japanese Dishonored with some heavy anime influences, uh, such as like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and Naruto, and I'll explain why, you know, a little bit further along why I compare it to those. Um, but thematically, it's all about supernatural beings, mystical powers, and it has a few, very few elements of a horror game. They clearly tried to make it a horror game, like I, I feel like that was an early concept, but it didn't actually turn out to be a horror game. If you love the concept of weaving signs, doing hand seals, using elemental attacks, and you know, being in a world full of creatures from Japanese folklore, then this game is for you. Now, let's get talk about the story a little bit. The game obviously takes place in Tokyo, hence the name, right? And all of the citizens in Tokyo, in this city, have disappeared after spirits, known as the visitors, have invaded. You play as Akito, who has been possessed by a detective spirit known as KK, which grants him supernatural powers. It's somewhat of a symbiotic relationship. Both Akito and KK have their own goals and agendas, and agendas, but they have agreed to help each other out. KK kind of serves as Akito's guide and sensei on this mission, and KK needs a body. You know, he's he pretty much can't do much without a body. So, you know, they're helping each other out. They're both benefiting. The dialogue and relationship between them kind of reminds me of Naruto and Kurama, the nine-tailed fox. And I've never actually watched JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. But what I know is, like, each one of those characters have, like, spirits in them that, like, give them powers and, you know, help them in fights and pretty much uh, like things like that. So that's why I make that comparison. And, you know, you all you anime experts can let me know if I'm correct in that assessment. So you have the choice to play the game with Japanese or English voices on. I chose Japanese voices for authenticity, and I think it helps with the overall immersion. Talk about the visuals a little bit. There are five graphic modes, which feels honestly a little bit unnecessary. Performance mode, which I played on, is 60 FPS. Quality mode is 30 FPS and described as a high fidelity rendering with ray tracing enabled. But it looks pretty choppy to me. So I looked at it and uh, yeah, it's not it's not something I could play at. I'm not going to. To me, it looked unplayable. I haven't played a 30 FPS game in a long time. So, when, you know, when you've avoided 30 FPS, your eyes tend to it, it tends to look worse on your eyes than it probably is. But it looked bad to me. Now, the most impressive part of the game's visuals is probably the lighting and reflections. And you should see what I'm talking about right now in the gameplay currently on screen. If you look closely, there's neon signs and like this flashing, uh, these three flashing traffic cones. And you could see the light reflecting off of, off of them uh, in the concrete in the streets. The streets are wet from rain and you could see the moisture, you know, uh, flowing down the street and glistening off the sidewalk. As far as everything else in the game, you know, I'm going to leave all that uh, in-depth stuff to Digital Foundry to break down. Um, but overall, I will say it's a decent looking game that looks outstanding in certain areas and just okay in others. I will tell you this game would look absolutely amazing and the best uh, on PC at 4K high state, high settings with ray tracing. Now I'm somebody who's you who's usually anti ray tracing because I don't think you know the frames that it sacrifices for better lighting is worth it. But this game, 
I mean, if it looks like this on a PS5, which is probably, you know, medium, medium settings equivalency, it, it, I know it's going to look amazing at a, on PC 4K with ray tracing. And I'm not even sure what resolution this is actually running at uh, on, on performance mode at 60 FPS. I would probably guess it's, it's definitely not native. Uh, it's, it's probably like maybe 1800p if I had to take a guess, maybe a little bit lower. You can completely remap the button layout if you want to, to your liking. And there's an option to turn down motion blur quality, but I'm pretty sure that's not the same thing as turning down motion blur itself completely, because when I was playing, I'm pretty sure I still noticed it. So you can turn down the quality of motion blur, but not motion blur itself, which seems kind of stupid. This is not the first game to do that and I don't really understand that. So, get to talking about the gameplay a little bit more in depth. I've been playing Ghostwire on the hard difficulty, and Ghostwire is a game that's kind of hard to estimate the fun factor from watching the trailers. The main way to engage enemies is through ethereal weaving, which all that means is just shooting elemental magic from your hands. You have regular attacks and charged attacks that are unique for each element. To restore energy for weaving attacks, you have to kill enemies or destroy crystallized ether, which is placed all over the game. You know, you'll usually never have a problem finding it. Weaving looks cool and it is actually fun. The hand animations are impressive and very theatrical as hand weaving signs, you know, should be. You can sneak up on enemies and perform quick purges, which are essentially just assassinations. But other than that, the game doesn't really have any stealth mechanics. You can only just sneak up behind enemies and kill them real quick. For, for defense, you have blocking and perfect blocking, which is really perfect parrying. If you block, you will still take damage. It will just be less damage than a direct hit. And the only way to avoid any damage is to perform a perfect block. The perfect block is not too hard to get the timing down for, you just have to wait till the last second and the window to land it is pretty wide. I think it's wide enough. If you perform a perfect parry on a projectile, then that projectile will deflect back towards the enemy. There is a palm strike, which doesn't do a lot of damage and it re obviously requires you to be pretty close to the enemy. And most of the time you want to keep your distance with these uh, with these enemies. Um, when enemies take enough damage, their cores will be exposed. Then you can grab their cores to finish them off. There's a regular ranged core grab. There's a close-up melee core grab. And then there's a ground core grab because you can knock enemies down. Your spectral vision helps you to see things in your environment. And you, you know how it works, you know, in several other, if you played several other games, it all works the same in every game. They just call it something different. It's a pulse that highlights things around you. You also have a bow and arrow as a weapon, but I seldom found use for it. You know, like if I have, if, you know, ethereal weaving and I, I can freaking shoot elements from my, from my hand, why do I really want to use a bow and arrow? The only time I used it was when I ran out of ethereal energy, which was very rare. Talismans with different effects, such as stun, can be used on enemies to immobilize them, and there's a bunch of different type of talismans with different effects. You know, there are also prayer beads you can find and equip to boost the power of some of your abilities. I would describe the world design as very wide linear. The game is not open world, people should know that, because it restricts where you can go, especially early on, um, and even when it does open up, I would describe it as a small city sandbox. There's like this, there's a hazardous fog around the city. It surrounds the city, and the only way to remove the fog and to progress is to go to these shrines and cleanse them. Even though the map isn't huge, the level design is very vertical, and accessing rooftops through, you, through these grappling hooks is a core part of exploration. The DualSense implementation is pretty good. For example, when you're grabbing a core out of an en enemy and pulling it, the haptic feedback and adaptive triggers makes it feel like there's actual tension. You can also hear KK's voice coming from the controller like it does in game, and some people may like that for immersion. If you're someone who's very obsessed with a game being quote unquote next gen, then you may find 
issues with this game because this game it plays and feels last gen or like a cross gen game in a lot of ways so i just want to say that to set expectations the game feels dated because for one even though the world is small it's not seamless example is you can enter certain buildings within the city but the screen fades to black and then you reappear in the room it doesn't take long to load at all it's like maybe two or three seconds but in comparison to a lot of games we get now which are completely seamless nothing ever fades to black like when you enter an area you know this design could feel pretty old to somebody there is a uh, character customization well it's not character customization you can characterize your cut your uh, character's outfit right but th that doesn't really mean much uh, because the entire game is in first person and you you know you don't get to see your character uh, too often the game seems to be extremely generous with money and supplies I've never really been short on anything so far and I've never been unable to buy anything I wanted so resource management isn't a factor at all in this game now for the main issues I had with this game is first the skill tree felt pretty underwhelming and it just felt incomplete it felt like they weren't done or that they wanted to do a lot more with the skill tree but for one reason or another they had to like kind of uh mini minimize it or downscale the uh the skill tree because it is pretty you know limiting um it seems basic and just it lacks creativity especially for a game that has you know elemental weaving and mystical powers side missions are placed all over the city and they feel both unremarkable and exceptional you know so it's a mixed bag when it, when it comes to the side missions you can get a side mission that's completely run-of-the-mill completely generic and you can get another side mission that you know is just really outstanding and they really thought outside the box with this one so you know it's a it's really just a toss-up which type of side mission you will get at any given time i think my biggest issue with ghostwire is the balance between your hp and how much damage the enemy attacks seem to do is is just off to me for example at the beginning of the game i think it took maybe two or three hits to kill you by the average enemy right so every time you level up by defeating enemies you know side missions different tasks and by collecting spirits and trading them in at phone booths which which sounds kind of crazy out of context but that's something you have to do every time you do you know you do that and you level up your hp also increases by a certain percentage i've increased my health a lot by doing side missions and doing a bunch of stuff in the world but somehow for some reason i can still it seems like i still can only take about two or three hits from the same average enemies so it just seems to make no sense to me that my health can vastly increase but i'm still dying from the same amount of hits from this from the same enemies that i did at the beginning of the game so i don't know that just seemed a little bit off to me so it's not like i found the game hard at any point but that balance just seemed to be a little bit weird and a little bit off and it kind of erased the point of having my hp increase if i'm still typically just gonna die in the same amount of hits but to summarize i've really been enjoying ghostwire tokyo i think the game is fun i like the combat uh, i think the story is interesting um i think this game is different the story might be you know end up being a little surface level i gotta see where it goes but overall i like just the fact that this game is a little bit different than what we've been getting uh lately i would say this is a it's a bit of a palate cleanser you know because essentially at its core you can consider this like a f a first person shooter in a way be because if you replaced like the weaving with guns that's what it would be but the fact that it's not guns and the fact that weaving you know uh behaves a little bit differently it feels a little bit refreshing i i would i would guess this is what a a doctor strange game would feel like if it was in first person i don't think we would want a doctor strange game in, in first person but i think that's what this game you know uh would feel like you know and like i said it's it feels like a japanese uh bioshock honestly 
Um, so yeah, those are my impressions. I'm enjoying it. It's it's good and it's fun. So hope I answered everybody's questions. I hope I gave enough information to help everybody, you know, make an informed purchase uh, or just an informed decision on if they want to buy this game when it comes out on May 25th. Uh, let me know what you thought about my uh, preview impressions. Please hit the like button. Follow me on Twitter and uh, hit the notification bell so you can know anytime I go live or upload a video. Thanks for watching. I'm out of here. Peace.